All right, welcome back to the show. Joined by my best buddies, Ryan Tutel, Coulter Nuanas with ESPN Radio. How we doing? Good, Sean. Thanks for having us back, man. I know. we just So we just recorded um, a little bit of our podcast on the Make It Rainy podcast, so be sure to listen to that. But you guys are here. We're going to be talking some Grizz greats because you guys do your own uh, little podcast, and it's been uh, really successful, really cool, and diving into a lot of cool things. Yeah, you know, we uh, started with Grizz greats, the uh, coaching tree podcast of the ni- all, all nine uh, living coaches of the University of Montana men's basketball team. And now we've expanded that to do the silver anniversary of the 1995 National Champions, the 25th anniversary of the first Division One AA National Championship for the Montana Grizzly football team. And without football this year seemed apropos, like pretty good time to release something like that. For people that uh, haven't lived in Missoula for 25 years, I think it's easy to forget that Missoula was by and large a basketball town in the 70s and 80s, even up into the early 90s. And Montana was a building program, but certainly nowhere close to the juggernaut they would become. The early 90s, the Grizz were still chasing a lot of teams. Georgia Southern, Appalachian State, Youngstown State. This 1995 national championship run, though, it pushed Montana through, and Montana went from David trying to slay Goliath to Goliath, the team that almost everybody thought was going to win the national championship. So this is going to be a fun series in which that we hope people remember great stories and great players, great coaches, great people in this community, but also realize the impact that this team had on the city of Missoula, the University of Montana, Grizz football, and the Big Sky Conference as a whole. So like, who, are, who are you talking to? Is it like players, coaches, everybody in between? Yeah, we've talked to, I mean, Mick Colleen and Andy Larson. Andy Larson made, of course, the game-winning kick in that national championship game. So those are the first two that are out right now. Uh, But we've talked with Dave Dickinson. We've talked with Matt Wells. We've talked with a number of coaches. uh, And we got a lot more still to do. And it's a 25-part series that we're going to be releasing once a week all the way through uh, till the end of this calendar year. So we're excited about that. But any and every view that we could get from this uh, is great and already the stories that we knew with a little fre- a little refresher and a lot of stories that we didn't know, which were fun, enjoyable, insightful, has been a blast. But like, likely subjects like a lot of the coaching staff, of course, all the standout players from Dave Dickinson to Matt Wells, but then a bunch of the offensive and defensive linemen, uh, Blaine McElmurray, who was a star safety on that team. But we also tried to get people that would remember the team from a different angle. So we interviewed Bill Johnson, who was the head of the Alumni Association, talking about the impact it had on the university as a whole. Uh, Ryan mentioned we talked to former voice of the Grizz, Mick Colleen. We also are planning on interviewing several of the former media guys that covered that team, people that were associated with the Big Sky Conference to talk about the impact they had on the league as a whole. So we have an array of angles to view this through. It's going to be 25 episodes when it's all said and done, 25 episodes for 25 years. What is something that you learned or that took you back when, when doing all the, these interviews and research for this? It's, it's so interesting because so often athletes, especially premier athletes, I don't want to say grow tired of, but they become accustomed to talking to the media. They become accustomed to giving interviews. So it sort of, it loses its allure. A guy like Dave Dickinson, for example, he's been doing interviews as the head coach of the Calgary Stampeders for a while now from a different angle. But actually remembering his senior year, it's been a while since he had a chance to do that. So these guys, they come locked and loaded with stories that a lot of people have never heard. I think that's been the coolest part is hearing stories. You think you know this team so well growing up in Missoula. Here are stories that you never heard before. We've had one of those in all the episodes we've recorded so far. When you're famous in Montana, you're the right kind of famous because you can be not famous anywhere else that you go. And so I don't think it's exhausting to a lot of these players. In fact, I think they really enjoyed totally. revisiting the memories because they don't get to talk about it every single day. And, you know, they're, they're largely anonymous in some of the places that they go. And yet here in the state of Montana, they, they, that memory is, is on the forefront of everybody's mind all the time. You know, that's what you kind of refer back to as the start of what became uh, an unbelievable Unbelievably nationally, you know, nationally elite University of Montana Grizzly football team, and so uh, I think it's been enjoyable for for the guys that we've talked to about it. Well, we're bumping up against it, um, but if our producer lets you guys stick around, we've been doing this Nerf shot back okay, here at the okay. end of every show, and I'd love to uh, see you guys. I made it last night for the first time ever, so I got, I want to see you guys if see what I you catch got. Catch rim, it's going to be a huge. <laughs> All right, we got NBA highlights and uh, shots when we come back. 